things are done, and there were no more conversations about any individual player than the pitcher you see in the circle right now. Kelly Maxwell begins her OU career with a base knock for Deanna Jennings. That's not how you drew it up for one of the best pitchers in America. One pitch, one on for the Blue Devils. Hey, efficient right there. You see that you <laughs> like it? This field looking a little bouncy. That's the advantage. You know, I've been thinking about slappers a lot heading into this year, and I've seen less and less of them as the years go on. Whenever you see a hard field like that, use it to your advantage. One pitch, one hit. Brings in the transfer, Giselle Tapia. So transfer on transfer here as that misses high. On a goal, Claire Davidson, Amina Vega, Kelly Torres, Francesca Freelix, Jada Baker, and Kelsey Zampa. The opening nine for Marissa Young and the Duke Blue Devils. Kelly Maxwell, arguably the headline in the offseason. If she wasn't, it was the thing that she was in response to in Jordy Ball going to Nebraska. We'll see her later tonight. But Kelly Maxwell going from Oklahoma State to Oklahoma, further cementing this group as the number one preseason favorite. But so far, so good because Deanna Jennings, who was simply brilliant for Duke last year, but off to a great start, and now Tapia trying to keep the battle going here against Maxwell. Will Tapia, the transfer from Pitt. Tapia hits that one well, but it is at Boone. That one, you can see Kelly Maxwell known for her curveball. Kind of seeing a few rise balls up and in on those lefties. I think we saw with the first slap hit and then the second pitch bun attempt. Duke's coming in and they're looking to be aggressive. They're looking to attack. I think Oklahoma knows that's going to be their mindset. So they're trying to get them to chase out of the zone. That one gets away from Maxwell and hits the elbow. Gold goes to first. And you can hear Duke immediately respond in kind. They get a hit, they get on. It doesn't matter. It's a base runner. That's exactly what they want. Whenever you're Duke and you have the kind of powerhouse offense, runner on second with one out, that's ideal in the first inning. Uncharacteristic start for Kelly Maxwell, who dominated in this tournament with the Cowgirls. And now Duke will bring one of their hottest hitters to bear. Yes, it's just game one, but Claire Davidson was scorching for the Blue Devils in the fall. Has lit it up in the practice sessions before this, the Puerto Vallarta College Challenge. And Kelly Maxwell senses that, comes with two quick strikes. I think there's something to be said for first game, first inning. New team last year, a little bit of nerves, but like you said, she looks like she's settling in. Just the waste pitch to try and see if you can bait Davidson. Everything that doesn't go OU's way is always magnified a little bit because you consistently expect perfection from the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national champions. The bouncing back from adversity, it's why they're here, a member of this outstanding field. They don't want to win every game by 15-0 this early. They want to be challenged, and they're certainly going to get that from these Blue Devils. The center, that's great range from Jada Coleman. Squirts away, but no real advance to be had. That Oklahoma defense, outstanding again. Outfield really having to have the range here. It's early in the morning, having played on that field, I know that sun can get pretty brutal, it can get pretty intense. So being able to track that down in the gap and battle the sun. You can kind of see by the angle of Kinsey Henson's helmet. It's pretty much overhead at this point. That sun did get Coleman late in the first game, but she has very clearly adapted and overcome as Vega watches strike one. I think something to be said also is we saw 
rise ball, rise ball, rise ball, the first two batters. But as she settled in, Kelly Maxwell has peppered in a lot more curve. As I say that, she throws a rise. <laughs> but she's peppered in a lot more curve, and you can tell that's where she's comfortable. That's where her go-to pitch is. Even though that is her go-to, we've seen Duke swing at a lot of high pitches, and that's, that's the one that they look like they're hunting after. Looks so good coming out of her hand, but it doesn't wind up being very good by the time it gets to the plate. Last two have missed too high, though. And so Kinsey Hansen will go talk to her pitcher, Maxwell. Gives us a chance to set the defense here for OU. We just saw Coleman in center. Core is in left. Boone is in right. The infield from left to right for the Sooners. Brito, Jennings, Hodge, and Sanders. Hansen doing the catching for Maxwell. And like we talked about, there's a lot to prove for both of these teams as a start off their season maybe not to prove but there's a statement that both of them want to make and duke has done such a good job coming out i love kenzie hansen kind of stopping and resetting that momentum for her pitcher resetting her mind and saying hey it's just softball it's one two three right. you know your pitch come right to me and everybody on the ou side knows that maxwell is currently facing a preseason all-american Vega sends that one straight back. The highest ranked recruit for Coach Young at Duke. One of only two players to play him all last year for the Blue Devils. And broke the freshman home run record set by her teammate over at first base just the year before. It's Jennings and Gold at second and first respectively. Maxwell gets the strikeout. Kelly Maxwell doesn't face a lot of trouble but when she does, you see the buckle down. That makes her one of the bona fide elite. Two stranded on OU's offense that went into double digits in game one. They're next. Perhaps the most clutch freshman in the sport of softball's history, Cassidy Curd, will make her sophomore debut here for the Duke Blue Devils. The first seven inning no-no at Duke, got it in the ACC semifinals, eight strikeouts against the Clemson Tigers. Quick little mishap with the mask. <laughs> I've been there, done that. <laughs> Got to make sure all the equipment is in tip-top shape when facing Oklahoma. But one of the outstanding youngsters anywhere in our sport begins the season for Duke. Kurds first pitch of the year up top to Jada Coleman. Like I said, I was so impressed with how Duke came out. High energy. That's something that they're going to want to maintain all game, but... 
now it's Oklahoma's turn to get their offensive response here. The ACC tournament had never seen a rookie throw a no-hitter until Cassidy Curd rewrote the record book. And that is a matter of course for this Duke team. Less than 10 years as a program, they are constantly setting new highs. Right now, this group is on the launching pad. Potential to the moon trajectory here this year. And we get to see an early measuring stick against, well, the <laughs> measurement in this sport in Oklahoma. And I love the C patience curve. from Jada Coleman there. Mm -hmm. She's able, that, that first changeup that came in for a strike, Curd knew what she was doing. Second pitch just floats it in. But you can hear Jada Coleman right away say no. That wasn't the speed. That wasn't the pitch she was looking for, kind of laying off the highs. She's biding her time and waiting for that pitch. Coleman, two hits, two RBI, a double, and two runs scored. Deuces wild in game one for Jada Coleman. She's in the driver's seat now and runs it full. That's the one Jada Coleman was looking for. You could see her want to go after it. But I think Kerr did such a good job with that curveball, keeping it just low enough to make Coleman hesitate. That's such a great pitcher's pitch. Opening payoff, away and high. Jada Coleman injects some energy into the Sooners. She's the leadoff base runner. And here's the reaction. I'm pretty sure everybody was waiting for. <laughs> no Jada Coleman, famous now for her reaction with all drawing the walk. She's fired up. The freshman Parker watching strike one. Jada Coleman has been doing this a while. Her. Yeah. Yeah. This is huge. She's second in the lineup, freshman, second game ever in college. There's a lot of confidence from Coach Gasso to put her there in that spot. But that as we confidence. saw from last game, yeah, we mm -hmm. saw from last game, she looks like a vet. I mean, you, you know more than me. You called that game. <laughs> Couple RBI, three runs scored, two walks. She was perfect. It was a good game to be a freshman for Oklahoma. Although as we say that, the standout freshman, not saying a lot given what Ella Parker did, not in this <laughs> opening nine for Oklahoma because Patty Gasso has such an absurdly deep team. That's Pickering who had a grand slam in her first collegiate at bat. That's a great pitch from Curd. And Curd, she is on it on that backdoor curve, especially to those lefties, taking advantage of them early. The placement right at the knee, it is so, so smooth. You don't see a lot of pitchers be able to spot that height location very often. That one's up high. Easy advance for Jada Coleman. with Jada Coleman on the bases, you have to be aware. You could see her big lead off there, just testing to see if anybody was paying attention because if they weren't, she probably would have taken third. That's something that Duke as a defense kind of needs to have in their mind. She's going to be pressing the button, trying to get that extra base. She's a smart base runner. But Curd, I, I think the message that coach is giving to her is yes, yeah, she's on second, but so what? You're up mm -hmm. in the count right now. You have the advantage. Attack these hitters, and our defense will take over. Oklahoma wasn't afraid to run in the first game either. And it forced an error at second that ultimately scored a run. That was Ella Parker who came all the way around to score. And, well, Ella Parker's in the batter's box right now. That pressure from OU constantly mounting. A pair of full counts to begin the season for Cassidy Curd. 
Her payoff. Misses up top. Back to back. Bases on balls for the champs. That was a great hold. You could tell Parker really, really wanted that pitch. But the control of her barrel to keep it back, that was so impressive. In a big moment where the crowd's starting to get up, being able to hold that back and draw that walk for her team, that's big time. RBI chance for the RBI queen. Here's Tiara Jennings working ahead in the count. And just from watching the Sooners, the first few at-bats, I think their plan heading into it, make this pitcher pitch a lot of pitches. She likes to nibble, make her come into the zone. Heard very clearly see. still settling in, yeah. They can see she's she's nervous a little bit. They can see kind of those high pitches. Yeah, she's pounding the zone with one or two, but as the pitch count increases, that strike zone is going to get smaller and smaller, and Oklahoma's ready for whenever she throws into it. Her does find the zone there. Important to note and remember, she is just a sophomore. Doesn't look like it very often, particularly over the course of her freshman campaign. But you begin year two against the juggernaut. That can get in your head. Still, she's one good theoretical pitch away from getting out of this thing. No Absolutely. outs yet. And so far, her backdoor curve has been her bread and butter for that strike. It has been the one that's been taken the most. It's the one that hasn't been squared up. That's her bread and butter. So maybe an off-speed and then you mix in that back door. I would love to see something. That one's straight back. There it is for Cassidy Kerr, her first strikeout of 2024. And hey, if you're going to strike somebody out and make a statement, Tiara Jennings is the person to strike out. That curve tailing a little bit farther on the inside half of the plate. That was a beautiful, beautiful pitch, beautiful placement. Kinsey but just Hansen. when you think it's lit up, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your next batter. A home run already. We've only played one game. There's a few of those. That one got up top. That's the first first pitch strike that Kurt has thrown. I, I mean, I think that would have been out of the zone if Hansen hadn't swung, but that's the mm -hmm. first first pitch strike that she's had in the first four batters. That one gets by Torres. So now it's two in prime position for Kinsey Hansen. and fouls it off. Hansen, she's been going after those high pitches, high pitches. Again, that bread and butter pitch, that low backdoor curve. I wouldn't be surprised if she sprinkled that in, even if Hansen takes it, just to throw her off of the last three that have been up in the zone. Hansen flares it and no problem. Tapia handles it, and the escape hatch opens for Duke. I mean, that's huge. You you walk your first two batters, and then to be able to get at the heart of your lineup two quick outs, that is massive for Duke. They carried a lot of momentum from offense. I love to see how Curtis settled in after the first few batters. Maxwell got into trouble, got out of it. Curd trying to do the exact same thing. 
that got Sid Sanders. So the bases will be full of suitors with two outs. This was the exact same situation we had in game one. Pickering went yard. Let's see what Alyssa Brito has in store. Rideau holds up, a lot of movement coming out of the hand of Kurd. And appeal down to third base, nothing doing. Ryan Critchett says no swing. Bo Uwald, balls and strikes today behind the plate. Ridam over at first. That one's up top. You know, I just took a moment to kind of look in the background and see all the fans it fills up pretty well and those stands go up a little bit higher and you you can definitely yep. tell that this tournament has grown it's a fan favorite you get to see mm -hmm. softball you get to have vacation it's the best of both worlds that hit to left but in range for davidson oklahoma leaves them loaded and Cassidy Curd dances out of danger. A fun first inning sees no runs either way. We're off to the second. A case study, an early adversity that goes by the wayside. Both Kelly Maxwell and Cassidy Curd wind up with a hit batter. That early season control briefly escaping before they both absolutely lock it down. We've got zeros on the board here in the top of the second. Torres, Freelich, and Baker do up here for the Duke Blue Devils. Go up against Maxwell. Last time we saw her here in Puerto Vallarta, it was a year ago. She went up against the Oregon Ducks and the running Rebs of Ole Miss. Her line, a casual 13 shutout innings with 23 strikeouts. First inning jitters, first intensity, first punch swung i don't know what you want to call it but as we go into the second inning i think this is where we're going to see something happen there is a lot of maybe maybe bases bases are loaded runners on base pitchers are getting out of these jams but nothing really happened i think we'll see one or the other one team score this inning it's so tough to evaluate as Torres now up 2-0 because on the one hand, both teams have unbelievably prolific offenses. On the other, this is two of the top pitchers anywhere on planet Earth right now. And so something's got to give eventually, but impossible to tell which. Really liked... Duke's approach to Maxwell early on. Yes, she wasn't throwing her best, but the swings that they took, they were hard. They were aggressive. They really want to let her know we're here, we're ready to swing. And in turn, that makes her a little bit more cautious with the pitches that she's throwing over the plate. She has to respect those swings. And you see her right now down two and one. 
Kelly Torres in the driver's seat. The Duke catcher will foul that one off. Kelly's been coming to Duke camp since eighth grade. It was always a perfect matchup between Coach Young and Kelly Torres. Now one of the senior leaders is plunked. Second hit batter of the game for Maxwell. And Duke has a leadoff base runner in both of our two frames. There's been a lot of walks already. There's been a lot of hit by pitches. There's there's some free bases that are being left out. And I know one thing that a lot of coaches look at at the end of games is how many runners did you leave on base? And just in the first inning alone, there were a lot of runners left on base. The DP, Frankie Freelich. Shows bunt, brings it back. Pop throw down from Kinsey Hansen is the insurance. Bunt, well played. That is called doing the job right there for Duke. You saw them want to do the same thing last inning when they got their lead up on. Didn't quite happen, had it fouled off, but you could see they want to get those runners in scoring position. If you have runners on second base, a hit in the gap, something through the infield, you're good as gold, especially whenever you have speed. Jada Baker, going after the first pitch she sees. Baker, one of the captains for Duke this year, along with the transfer Tapia. Too many red shirt Good sophomores response. earn that C, but she tells you all you need to know with that. Great pitch location there by Kelly Maxwell. That curve came across the plate, almost breaking in towards the ankles. That's a tough pitch to fall off on the inside half. That one and in she the goes dirt. back Great there block. again, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great job by Hanson behind the plate. You can see where Maxwell was heading with that pitch. Had that curveball that was kind of breaking in and down. Got the swing. Okay, let's do it again. Maybe a little bit farther down. She missed just a tad, but you could see, you could see the little, I want to swing at that. Mm -hmm. Not a moment's hesitation there. Flying down to third. What a throw by Hanson. Brito applies the tag and Torres. Left out to try. Kenzie Hansen, one of the probably the best catcher in D1 softball. I mean, the way she makes her pitchers feel, the way she blocks. We just saw the way that she's able to reach across her body and still throw the runner out at third. Phenomenal, phenomenal job, and great job by Brito applying that tag. That was a hook slide around third, and it's kind of hard for Brito to stretch and reach that, but it was a great quick tag. This time last year, Lindsey Hansen was out of the lineup. She missed the first couple of weeks of the Sooners' season a year ago. She's pretty clearly excited to be back. That was a laser beam. Two into Baker. She sends that one over to Tiare Jennings. The stretch by Sid Sanders is enough. 
the Oklahoma defense for the second inning in a row puts together what for most are highlight reel plays. For this group, it's just routine. There's been no shortage of base runners, Nicole, but when it comes down to those critical moments, both pitchers finding a way, we've got no runs on the board. Absolutely, and I think Oklahoma's defense kind of helped out Kelly Maxwell a little bit that last inning. You had that fantastic throw and tag by Kenzie Hansen and Alyssa Brito, and then Tiari Jennings with the backhand across the body, across the diamond. A great stretch by Sid Sanders. That, that is Oklahoma in a nutshell right there. It's a full team yep. effort. It's not one or the other. It's all cylinders, all parts of it working. Other Oklahoma in a nutshell moment here. Avery Hodge played a lot last year, mostly as a pinch runner. Now she's in the opening nine in a top 10 matchup. The depth that Patty Gasso's team has in this, her 30th year, boggles the mind. A little sneaky there, Avery Hodge. I'd mm -hmm. love to see that surprise. You could see the reaction from the Duke defense. They weren't quite expecting her to lay that one down. I talked in the very, <laughs> the very first pitch of the game, Jennings with that beautiful placement slap. I'd love to see these slappers, these lefties, mix things up a little bit. If you don't watch a lot of softball, you probably think Oklahoma's out here just hitting bombs every single at bat. And make no mistake, that is part <laughs> of their identity. But it is a true full toolkit for this Sooners offense. Great spot there by Kerr. Trying, she she has the advantage right now. She's up in the count, trying to get Hodge to nibble at that inside pitch. Especially as the slapper, sometimes that's hard to discern. Is it on the plate? Is it not? Hodge stood in there, went right through it. Second he pitched by Kerr. Yeah, I mean, that curveball is really working. She's working that back door, that cross the plate, regular curve. It's looking beautiful, but the placement, I think, is what's been key for her. Sometimes pitchers get into trouble with that curveball. If it's mid-thigh height, she's keeping it right at the knees. And Akur came in last game. Now she gets the start. She was hit by a pitch and eventually came around to score. Can't time that one up. This is the Cassidy Curd that ran through the ACC tournament. Mm. 
<laughs> she is finding her groove. You can see it too, a little bit of strut in the walk as she's walking to the back of the circle. You can see the confidence starting to settle in. You can see her start to settle in, deep breath there. Back to back K's for Cassidy Curd. I mean, sure, you don't, you can have your defense <laughs> make amazing plays or you could just strike out back to back. It's up to you. Yeah. Cassidy Curd says, you know what? I'm just going to do the strikeouts back to back. I'll just take that route. An artist in that regard had the eight against Clemson. Has gone double digit K's already in her young career in a game. Did it against Longwood with 11. It'll be up to Riley Boone. And I think the difference that I've seen from top of the lineup to bottom of the lineup, top of the lineup was really patient. They made yeah. her pitch her pitch. Bottom of the lineup, I've seen a lot of, a lot of first pitch swings from them. Two straight walks began the day, to your point. And since then, the strikeouts have begun to mount. I mean, I, I kind of go back to Kenzie Hansen swinging at the rise balls. She can handle mm -hmm. those pitches very, very well. But if the plan is, I, and I don't know if it is or not, but if it is, make her come down, especially when she's been walking so many pitchers, it kind of has to be perfect for you to swing at it. No doubt. Although, it is easier for us to say that than to do it on the field. Those rise <laughs> balls, those balls up top just look so good. When it works, I think it's the most unfair pitch in the sport. Curd looking to come in with that off speed. But you could tell Boone right away. She wasn't out in front. She wasn't leaning. She wasn't looking for that off speed. She wasn't fooled by it. Back to back in the dirt. You can see the thinking from Curd. Keep it low. Try and get a waste pitch in there. But that's too low, and Boone runs it full. Riley Boone, she's kind of a sneaky hitter for Oklahoma. They placed her at the nine all last year, and... You, you gotta think a uh, nine hole, like, okay, like last one, uh -huh. and then you turn it over, and then you have to worry. Not so with her. Nope. That just misses. Riley Boone would be a leadoff hitter for 98% of teams in the NCAA. She flips this lineup <laughs> and hands it to Jada Coleman. But I mean, after, realistically, after the first inning, there is no leadoff, right? Right. So how often do hitters come up and it's 7-8-9 or 8-9-1, right? And if you have that caliber of hitter kind of lower in the lineup, the ability to turn it over just increases exponentially. Absolutely. You know, you, you probably sacrifice a few ABs over the course of a full season, but the ability to just lay those traps all across one through nine. It's something Coach Gasso has talked a lot about, just having zero empty runs in this batting order. And that's certainly the case this year for number one. to the Big 12 Player of the Year. Coleman works ahead. And then there's that discipline that we are talking again. Three pitches in and not a single swing. Yes, she got a strike called on her. No, it didn't ruin the at-bat. It didn't cause her right. to panic and say, okay, I got a swing at the next one that's remotely close. She's waiting for that pitch that she wants. Not that time, and a pop throw there from Torres to try and <laughs> steal one. That was just a nasty pitch. I mean, in that her head, that dirty. looked a lot different than it was. Yeah, that was sick. Cassidy Curd. 
We've seen that we've seen that off speed a couple of times. And whenever whenever it's at that right height, it is dirty. That went in on the hands. Uh, Jada Coleman felt that one. Little bit of action there. I love it. 2-2 two, two count. You have Riley Boone on bases. Going for the steal. Why not? Boone can fly. Just another double threat right there. You have the speed of Boone. You have the speed of Coleman. Both of them able to be so versatile. Both really, really smart base runners as well. Two's up. That one just blooped. Over to Baker, makes the grab. Cassidy Curd settling in here in year two and stifling the top team in America through two. This is a good game. I had a feeling. Had a feeling. Yeah. Off to the top of the third we go. 9-1-2 for the Duke Blue Devils. Group that's just continued to grow. And as you start to kind of dissect the national polls, this Duke team maybe doesn't get as much love as they should simply just because they haven't been around as long as most other programs. And you certainly do have to earn it in the sport of softball. Oklahoma has, but Duke just at every single opportunity they're given continues to impress. See Kelsey Zampa lead it off for the Blue Devils. Mostly been a runner to this point in her career, but Coach Young told us last night she's just had such a good fall that she's earned this chance. After 30 plate appearances last year, she'll pick up her first in this first game against Kelly Maxwell. Welcome to the opening nine. Nice pitch by Maxwell going on the inside half, going on the outside half. Getting ahead, I think, is going to be important for these pitchers. You've seen them kind of struggle a little bit, but whenever they attack and they throw their pitches, you've seen a lot of success. Sampa put that in a great spot, and it doesn't <laughs> matter. Riley Boone. Come on. Riley Boone didn't quite know tonight. I for that one. Do I catch it on my feet? I ended up doing some kind of like Elvis style knee slide there. <laughs> that was a great catch. That's a out perfect there. way to describe it. I mean, I, I was like, I don't know what she's going to do. <laughs> Elvis style. Elvis style. I mean, why not, right? Absolutely. Tennessee is a huge part of this sport. Might as well adapt the icon. <laughs> Say, hey, let's do it. Elvis style. Elvis style. 
Yana Jennings didn't wait around very long. One pitch, one single. First time around, and Deanna Jennings hit that well enough to earn a second hit, but it's right at Brito. Bad luck meets some unbelievable skill from the Sooners. Man, what a snag by Alyssa Brito. That was unreal. She, she does such a good job at the hot corner. She played whenever she first started her career at Oregon at short, but since then she's moved around, been in left field, played at third base last season. She's just so athletic. I love that catch from her because it's just, yeah. it shows what that defense can do. You saw that catch from Riley Boone. You saw that from Melissa Burrito. The defense is on point for Oklahoma, and Cassidy Curd has been on point for Duke. You mentioned it last game, but when Burrito came from Oregon, she told Coach Gasso, hey, wherever you need me, I'm there. She just has that versatility that gives you so many options as a coach. And as you just saw, it doesn't really matter where you put her. She's probably going to excel in that spot. Tapia hits it well. That is three hard-hit balls by the Duke Blue Devils, and none of them resulted in a base runner. Oklahoma. Fantastic. It really takes all phases of a game to win back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national championships. And we are seeing it right now from this Oklahoma Sooner team. The offense has been good in spurts, but the pitching and defense has been almost unbelievable until you realize that it is Oklahoma. But still, Cassidy Curtin, the Blue Devils, stride for stride so far. I mean... This is what you want to see out of two top 10 teams. You want to see, are they evenly matched? Is there a battle going on as a fan, as a viewer, as somebody who loves to watch softball? But as a player on these teams, as a coach right now, you're going to want to see these adjustments start to happen. And I think we saw that from Duke. You talked about three hits back to back to back. None of them dropped, yes, but that's the adjustment. We didn't see too many solid contacts. We didn't see multiple back to back to back they were kind of sprinkled throughout the lineup mm -hmm. that shows they're making the adjustment right away against kelly maxwell here's plate appearance number two of this game for ella parker She's watching strike one. We caught up with Coach Gasso this week <laughs> and asked her, what do you think of the freshman? And she said Ella Parker is going to be in our daily lineup despite the experience and depth. She's just that good. But right now, it's the sophomore Curd with all the advantage. Not a bad idea. I mean, that was a big swing there from Parker. And then to go back and try to tease her into drawing that pitcher's pitch and get that swing. Parker loops it up, and it gets out of play. I mentioned it earlier, but as we get a look at the fans there, because that one went out of play. A packed house here at Nancy Almada Stadium in Puerto Vallarta. 
Not the easiest trip, but these two fan bases <laughs> were ecstatic to make it, and it results in an incredible atmosphere all tournament long in both sessions. We've got some really, really great group of fanatics. And that's what fan is short for, and it, it's going to only add to the experience for these athletes. I mean, twist my arm. I'll go watch softball <laughs> near the beach. Right. Fine. Fine, I'll do it. Yeah. I think in particular, uh, our nightcap will represent a group that was like, uh, I think we can, coming from the Pacific Northwest in Nebraska. It was 18 inches of snow on the field in Lincoln. There was not 18 inches of snow here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Two, two, Sorry, run pitch. it full. I think that's the right call from the bump. That That's a little inside. You could see a lot of hand movement behind the plate. Just a little bit. That is a great pitcher's pitch. That's really, really hard to lay off as a hitter. Parker's run it full in both of her plate appearances. And she'll keep it right there. And a really good battle this at bat, too. Yeah. At least eight pitches into this count. She's going to make it a tough one. She's not going to go down without a fight. The ninth pitch from Curd. Just enough. <laughs> I don't think Ella even knew she got a piece. I mean, that was the 11th pitch right there. This has been an absolute battle between these two. You had the freshman, you had the sophomore pitcher. It's back and forth, back and forth. And I think the adjustment is going to have to be throw something on the other side of the plate. We've been seeing her attack Parker on the inside, 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 inside. Throw something on the other side of the plate. Throw something maybe a little bit higher. Make her chase out of what she's been seeing. Curd's got the plan. The payoff again. This one's in play and just within reach. A nice little basket catch by Jada Baker. Nice little indeed. You can kind of see a little bit from that aerial view. There's a lot of dirt on this infield. It goes back probably a good 20, 30 feet. That's huge range. She caught that in the grass. So to be able to make that catch, it was softly hit. That could have been an easily a dropped bloop. Quick single for Kinsey. For Tiara, sorry, excuse me. For Tiara Jennings as she steps up to the plate. So how does Curd keep the momentum going? After the long battle, she starts it out with a strike. low that low curveball has been getting these girls all day long it is beautiful I, mean, I think oklahoma is trying to adjust to that high pitch and that low curveball it's hard to hit both planes you gotta choose one or the other just, I mean, just then you saw that right you saw yep. the pitch before it was low it was below the knees that pitch high up at the shoulders maybe even a little bit over and Jennings going after both of them. You can't hit both planes. The barrel angle is different. You have to be able 
to lock in and choose one of those. And I think that's what you've seen from Oklahoma, a lot of fly balls from them trying to go after too much at once. Just reached out and poked that one. That's a long way to dead center field. How about the strength of Tiara Jennings? I guess Tiari Jennings decided that she wanted to go after that low pitch, and she did. Oklahoma striking first with a massive center field home run shot. You love to that see it from them, and immediately possible. the crowd erupts. That's so fun. That's absurd. You look at that swing in isolation, right? Take the name off of it. You're like, that's a lazy fly to center because she was not set. She reached out, and she just got a piece of it. But Tiara Jennings is so strong. She hit it to the deepest part of the yard for a home run. That is bonkers right there. I mean, I think that's their first hard hit this whole game. Yeah, absolutely. Right now it's 1-1 to Kinsey Hansen. This one much more routine to center and it turns into an adventure, <laughs> but Vega sticks with it, fights the Puerto Vallarta Sun and answers the run of Oklahoma Web Jams with one of her own. Man, I, we talked about the sun in the first inning and how difficult it can be on this field whenever it's directly overhead. And you saw she was tracking it pretty much all the way and then last minute there was the, oh no, where did it go? But to stay underneath the ball and track it all the way into the glove, a fantastic catch. Sanders watching ball one. She'll be wary of that. She was hit by a pitch her first time up, and there, another one inside. So the message, very, very clear. We are approaching Sid Sanders on the interior part of the plate from Duke. I think Curd, the response with Hanson after Jennings hit that home run, Fantastic job. Okay, I'm going to go to that same pitch that T.R. Jennings hit the home run out, and I'm going to get Kinsey Hansen out. You want to see her go after Sid Sanders the same way. After you get a huge, huge out from Kinsey Hansen, you come up to Sid Sanders, and it's 3-0 really quick. I think taking the deep breath of, okay, there was a big adrenaline rush of the home run, then the big adrenaline rush of Kinsey Hansen got out. How does she reset? How does she get back to neutral how does she get back to her perfect space to be able to go at Sid Sanders Sanders very much in the driver's seat right now as well and she'll walk it out Second free pass of the game for Sid Sanders. I mean, big walk there, getting Oklahoma back into it, trying to get him to rally. But think back to whenever we saw Kurt really dealing. She was going and attacking with that backdoor curveball again and again and again. I would like to see a few more of those this at bat against Brito. Went through a little bend right out the gate. Unless the burrito was on it. A two out base knock. Burrito said, I am all over this. <laughs> Hard hit in the 5 6.
Sooners did not have a hit before this inning. Now they've got a home run and a single. And Maya Bland will come in pitchers. and run at second base. We talked about both pitchers not getting knocked around, but starting to see hard hits getting hit off of them. And I would say both Kurd and Maxwell are tied up at two apiece with two hard hits off of them. But one just happened to go over the fence for Oklahoma. That's the yeah. difference right there is where can you – Obviously, home runs are great, but where can you get the ball to land? Where can you get it to fall? We saw what Brito just said. It's hit where nobody is. It's being able to hit the ball hard enough that even if somebody's there, it still goes past him. Yep. It's two changes here for Oklahoma. Torres comes in to hit. Bland comes in to run. It's high and tight. We talked with Coach Gasso earlier this past week. She she talked about how it's a battle over at second base. It's a battle at shortstop. We don't know who's going to be where. That's what this preseason is for, is to try and figure that out. And Torres, she was in the mix about yep. talks of maybe we'll see her at second base. And so... No surprise as she comes in to hit for Hodge, we'll probably see her at second base next inning. And it's riding the strong hand as well. One for one with a double and a walk against UVU. Just fired that one in there, a get me over pitch. Heard getting that call that she's been wanting. Hasn't been getting it too much on the lefties on that corner. But that's the call that she's been wanting. That's the call she's been waiting on. Right back. You can see right now Seriously. the outfield super deep. They their warning track right yeah. now. Gotta respect the power that mm -hmm. Alina Torres has. About to say the exact same thing. Sooners are right at the fence. Oklahoma team pushes the boundaries of every single ballpark they go to. They will certainly do so in Love's Field here this year for the first time. Torres will keep the battle going. This is another big battle that we've seen. First one, I think, was Parker whenever she had that 11 pitch at bat. She was battling, and look who we see in the on-deck circle. None other uh -huh. than Cassidy Pickering. The other freshman, as I was speaking of one, how's that? Her first at bat of college, she had a grand slam. Not a not a bad way to start it off. Not a bad way to start it off. Torres hit that well and drops it into right field. Bland comes around to score. Oklahoma has doubled the lead. What a battle by Torres. She was battling back and forth, back and forth. And I think we'll see a change here. But what a great battle there. This is no massive indictment on Kurt. It's just that Duke has a bevy of choices. 
and so they'll play matchups as well. Pickering was scheduled to come in and pinch hit. We'll see if that remains the move. A pitching change here for the Blue Devils with the Oklahoma offense waking up in their second game of the year. Lee Walker will come in, and what a backup plan for Coach Young. Eight and two a year ago, an ERA of 1.20 in her 58 and a third innings pitch. She struck out 40 while walking just 19. A breakout superstar for the Blue Devils in 2023 will now make her 2024 debut with Sooners at the corners and two down. For Duke, that he, we talked about how the outfielders were playing deep warning track. Lena Torres roped that one, but kind of bounced a few times, shallow out in the gap. They were able to minimize the damage, but not enough. I think we saw Kurd give up four hard hits in Oklahoma in that inning alone. I think that was the right call to be able to switch her out. And again, it's early in the season. This is everybody's first outing. Being able to feel yourself out, test yourself out, know, know when to throw this pitch, know when to not. I think that's something that a lot of teams are going to be going through these next week or two. Something to be said, too. This is the second game for Oklahoma, first for Duke. So OU got the extra chance to get into rhythm. Very much did in that first game against UVU. One one to Pickering. Pickering in the very first back. game of her collegiate career, <laughs> showing off and had five RBI. There are players that will go through an entire four-year career without a five RBI game. But Pickering added the sack fly on top of the grand slam. Just outstanding. Reached out the dive there by Gold. Does the job. At least at first. Gets away at the end. And this inning continues. Cassidy Pickering causes chaos, and Oklahoma leads by three. I think we'll, what's important to note, too, is the pitcher that came in for Duke, she's actually from a small town in Oklahoma, kind of near yep. Tulsa, but Walker, number 15, she has a little bit of something to prove. I mean, I think it's a local girl against Oklahoma. That, that was her home state. What better time than now to be able to show out and shove a little bit against them? Member of Chickasaw Nation, Avinola, Oklahoma. That representation incredibly important to her and incredibly important to this Duke program. You're right, right now going against the hometown team. That one's chopped up and right on cue. Walker fields her position brilliantly and does stop the bleeding. But Oklahoma on three hits, puts together a few runs. And just like that, the Sooners are in business.
Just like that, one of the most dangerous phrases in the sport of softball. Kelly Maxwell enters the circle with a fairly sizable lead. 3-0 OU. We go top four. I mean, what an inning. There was a lot of chaos. There was a lot of movement. There was a lot of action. That's exactly what you want to see. We talked about being able to make responses, being able to make adjustments and make them quickly. That was what Oklahoma did in a nutshell, almost going through the whole batting lineup. Everybody but Coleman hitting that frame on a gold first pitch swinging. One up, one down. And it's important to note, too, that Duke was doing a great job starting to get those hard hits off of Maxwell. They were having a little bit more pop. They were just hit directly to people. Staying in that same zone is going to be important for them. It's only the fourth inning. You have a lot of game left. But if you're trying to play too far outside of yourself, it'll be hard. But the first three innings, they, they've done a great job of looking like they're zoned in and they're locked in and they know what they want out of Maxwell. They know what pitches they're hunting for. By the way, Oklahoma, as far as the subs go, pretty much keeps it straight up. Pickering stays in the game and plays left field. Torres stays in the game and plays second. The only re-entry is Sid Sanders resuming at first base. Davidson gave it a ride, but Riley Boone has been a magnet in right field. That's another one that we were just talking about. A crush, absolutely. Barreled that one up. Riley Boone right there making a play. Duke right now, they just need one hit to fall. I think if they can get one hit yeah. to fall, the game changes for them. They just need to get that one hit. Deanna Jennings has the only hit right now for the Blue Devils, and it was on the very first pitch of the game. Other than that, well, she has been exactly what you expected. Lift it up. Torres and Boone communicate. It's Boone's ball. One, two, three, go the Blue Devils. Kelly Maxwell. Well, nope, she's good. Oklahoma now looks to string together crooked numbers. Three runs on a handful of hits in the third, and now they get the top of their order to bear here in the fourth. Coleman, Parker, and Jennings slated to hit here for Patty Gasso's team as we get the first full inning of work for Lily Walker. we were talking about Oklahoma they kind of opened a can of worms last inning but with Walker it maybe this got maybe one hit but other than that she did a good job of coming in as relief but 
top of the lineup, fresh start, new inning. Oklahoma is coming in with the intention, we have to score more. We want to score more. We need to get hits. For Walker, the intention right now is to be able to draw these Oklahoma hitters, especially at the top of the lineup, to swing at things a little bit outside of their zone. Good find at the outer part of the zone there for Lily Walker. Coleman doesn't even get to Jennings. That's Vegas for the first. Walker getting a big first out of Jada Coleman. It's her second time popping up. You want to keep that trend going, especially as you get to Parker, Jennings, Hansen. You want to make quick outs, not have them see a lot of pitches, get quick swings early in at-bats. Beautiful bender right there from Lily Walker. Nothing but fair, first pitch you, strike. Yeah, you force Oklahoma to have to swing earlier if you throw strikes early in the count, if you pound the zone. Same idea, slightly different execution. Vega been involved in both outs. There it is, same idea. It's make them swing, make them feel that you have to go after these pitches. That pitch is inside, a little bit high. Probably not the best pitch for Parker to swing at. Right now, Walker is setting the tone early with first pitch strikes, and then she comes right back at him. It wasn't necessarily the Best pitch to swing at for Tiara Jennings in her last at bat, and it didn't make one bit of difference. <laughs> I think we can all say <laughs> clearly Tiara Jennings is one of those athletes that even if you do fool her, even if she yeah. doesn't have the best form, the best swing, she can still hit it out of the park with ease. To the longest part of the yard. I'm honestly still thinking about that in between innings. It's just such a absurd home run that would have been like impossible a few years ago, but the level of athlete in this sport just continues to grow and grow and grow. And now the level is awesome. And you can see the caution that Walker has with Jennings leads the count to a no. Kind of nibble around the zone with her. She's not taking any chances. Ooh. Came home with that bender. <laughs> back to back. Yep. Curve working well. That one was low. Again, it doesn't matter. Jennings squared it up. She's got back-to-back -back hits. That one, the placement on that was so absurd. It was low. It was in. It was below the knee. It was on the corner of the plate. Walker... She nailed that location, but Jennings, she's just that type of hitter who can be able to hit that. And look at her, big smile on her face. Yep. I mean, I would be too. Is that a good Absolutely. couple last bats? Gets on base, passes a bat to her teammate, Kenzie Hansen. Right back to the curve. That one had some elevation to it as well for strike one.
So now through about a game and a half, Tiare Jennings has two hits, one of which was the home run, and three walks. He's already been on base five times. Change nice. up again. Yeah. You can see the little slight knee buckle from Kenzie Hansen. Jennings wasn't fooled by that one, like you said. Just the ability to read the pitch, keep her hands back, and barrel it through the zone, even if her body is not necessarily in the right spot. Dive there. Tapia manages to hold on. Again, the difficult made to look routine. There is a reason that this <laughs> is a top 10 matchup. Oklahoma and Duke living up to the billing. Oklahoma with the three-run lead, though. Looking to go 2-0 and oh in their doubleheader day here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. They've got two more coming up after this. Washington and Long Beach await. Duke's doubleheader is tomorrow. Iowa State and Nebraska. A packed field. I mean, I, I guess they have to be just enjoying and soaking up all this sun. Not only are they yeah. starting off their season, they're starting it off in Mexico, and they get to start it off in a field. We were talking to Nebraska, and they were saying it's been snowing, it's been raining, it's been all kinds of crazy weather. They don't normally get on the field until much later on in the season. So for them, this is like the trifecta of a yep. way to start their season. And most importantly, they're healthy. Yeah. Yeah, that's big. We talked about it. Both teams have dealt with injuries at different points last year. Some really critical junctures. And there are teams in this tournament that are not healthy. These two are. And it only adds to the top ten. <laughs> Kelly Torres v. Kelly Maxwell. Right now it's advantage Torres. Good layoff on that off speed on the outside. I feel like this game has also flown by a little bit. I looked up and man, yep. we're in the sixth inning already, top of it. It's been pretty much one inning that we've seen the most contact, the most hits, and then that one inning yeah. that Oklahoma scored their runs. But besides that, a lot of three up, three downs, maybe four up, three down. It's been fairly quick rushing through those innings. That one is right to Brito. Duke at this point, has to be a little frustrated. I mean, they know it's a softball season. It's a long year. But at a certain point, you'd really like these plays to stop being made if you're rooting for the Blue Devils. <laughs> Maybe there should just be a big fence right in front of Alyssa Brito that says, do not hit. Yeah. You know, don't <laughs> hit it that way, and then maybe, maybe it'll fall through. She has been 
like a vacuum over there on the corner. Freelick goes after the first one. You know, there's, there's the analytic, right, hit percentage. The possibility when you factor in launch angle and the velo off the bat, X percent of the time, it's a base knock. So many of these, by the numbers, should be base hits. A and that's where the analytics, at least that one, doesn't necessarily factor in. This is the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national champions who make plays that are very much low percentage and unreal to watch. I think sometimes it's so easy to get caught up in the numbers, in the analytics, and yes, it is so, so important. But there has to be that level of feel. And talking with all the yep. coaches in this tournament, I feel like we heard them echo that that thought of, yes, we look at it, but at the end of the day, it's my gut. I go with my gut, I go with my feeling. And I think what makes these teams that are so good, that are in the top, they have that gut feeling of, she's gonna throw this pitch here. This ball is going to be hit here an inch over as a pitcher. I want to throw it here because I, I think I can fool her there. It's that feeling, that instinct, that softball IQ. Freelix showing some of that IQ right now as she stays alive. Frankie has to lay down the sacrifice bunt her first time around, so this is her first chance to swing away here in this 2024 season for Duke. She's looking to shorten up with two strikes and runs it full. Straight pull. Heads up down that, that third base coaching box. Coach Young will have the reaction speed even after a long travel day. It was about 12 hours for the Blue Devils. Had in the late practice, though. Coach Young said, We don't care one bit. We're ready to start this season. Yara Jennings also very ready. He ranges over for out number two. So it'll be up to Jada Baker to try and get Kelly Maxwell out of this rhythm. Like we talked about 13. what seems like last inning and the inning before and the inning before we've seen these hits by duke and they are so good they're so hard and the analytics all point to yeah that should have been a hit if they can just squeeze one where it just drops i think they'll be able to feel that momentum again that they felt in that first inning this is the kelly maxwell that the softball world was terrified of when they saw she was joining oklahoma she has faced the minimum in the last three innings, on the doorstep of doing it again, and thanks to the caught stealing, has retired 13th straight. Did she go? No. Baker hangs on by a sliver. That gets some oohs and ahs from Sooner Nation. There was a couple earlier in the game where I had to squint a little bit where Kurt, he had that beautiful back door. And that was another one where, I don't know, a little bit too close to call when you have two strikes as a batter. Back-to-back -back full counts. Got Freelick to pop up on the 3-2. Maxwell comes home. And will need to do so again. I 
We've seen so many at bats where they've gone deep into counts, where hitters have been down 0 and 2. They've come back, they've battled back, fouled off strikes, drawn balls. I love to see this discipline for these players in the plate, especially so early. This is the first weekend that they're playing and already having that discipline. Kelly Maxwell. Just her second strikeout of the day. She hasn't done it that way. It's been a defense type game for her, but she has now faced the minimum in four straight innings. Pretty much all the offense coming over the course of 15 minutes or so. That third inning bringing about the three runs for Oklahoma. Other than that, this barrage of pitchers, two for Duke and Kelly Maxwell, have been outstanding. We go to the bottom of the fifth, OU, trying to change that with Sanders, Brito, and Torres scheduled to hit. Corey, I feel like this is a question that everybody talks about at the beginning of every year. Oh, the pitchers, they're going to be the ones to dominate this year. No, no, no. It's going to be the hitters. Yeah. It's going to be a hitter's mm -hmm. year. I'm, I'm curious what you think. Do you think it's going to be a pitcher or hitter year? I kind of feel like, and I always lean pitchers. I just think the way hitting goes, baseball and softball being such games of failure, it takes a second to get into the mindset of hitting. Pitchers have the inherent advantage, right? And, and so, yes, they need to get midseason form too, but I always think early season pitchers have the advantage, and I think that's going to be even more true this year with, with so many pitchers in new places going against competition that wasn't necessarily expecting it five, six months ago. It'll be interesting to watch. How about you? What do you think? I'm, I'm right there with you. I think it's definitely going to be a pitcher's year. I, Off the top of my head, the past few years, there's always been maybe like three or four where I'm like, yeah, they're solid pitchers. But now I feel like that list has grown to there's eight, there's nine, there's 12. And I, I have this whole list of pitchers in my head, and they're all excellent. And I would love to see yeah. them battle it out against some of the best of the best hitters. And I think they would win nine times out of ten so um, I think it might be the year of the pitcher if nothing else today will be the day of the pitcher we have seen two really good performances in this one game three should be outstanding and game four tonight slated to be one of the best pitching matchups we're going to have all year a pair of former prep teammates in Nebraska slated to go against each other as the Cornhuskers take on the Washington Huskies. Actually, now that I'm thinking on it, I kind of want to rephrase. I think this is going to be the year of pitching staffs. Um, yes, the sure. pitcher, but I think we're going to see a lot of staffs work. Beautiful pitch there in tandem, tag team style, almost like you would see in baseball. Um, maybe yep. not as frequent of changes just because in softball the arms can go longer but i think we'll see that i mean great example right now is the curd and walker that tandem right there sanders rips it into right stampa no way oh my goodness and I love how afterwards she's like, yeah, yeah, that was good. Turned away. <laughs> yeah, that kind of hurt. That was a flying leap. She was completely parallel. Full extension, full reach for that one. I mean, the amount of trust, if you miss it, it's at the field. It's at the fence. Yep. That catch was incredible. 
has wow. to be a top 10. No doubt. I mean, the weekend is still early, but man, yep. that was fantastic. And Oklahoma's probably got some entries, right? I mean, they have been unbelievable <laughs> defensively in this game, but wow. I, I think that one tops it for me defensive-wise. Uh, that you. was an incredible play. You. Go one for two today. Great pitch there. Oh, time. This is Brito's second time facing Walker. Got the hit the first time in that five six, but. Walker's done such a good job of just moving the ball around the zone. It's never in one spot too often. Alyssa Brito gives it a ride. Claire Davidson sees it the entire way for out number two. And I think Walker is different from Kurt in the way of she might not be as overwhelming. You're not going to see the K numbers that Kurt will draw up, but Walker just... Again, just making the hitters just enough off to where they have to they have to swing at it and then the defense they get to the play and they get the outs and it's a really, really beautiful synergy the way that she works and trusts her defense. Funny you use the word synergy there. The first time I heard reference to the stat tracking and analytics that is synergy, I thought the coach was saying we have synergy like, oh, yeah, we have good team cohesion <laughs> in the sport. And obviously that's critically important. So I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And He's I've like, no, no, synergy not that. By every single coach. Yeah, no, not that. Now it's now it's very critical to the sport in its own way in that it is now pretty much uniform across P5. Walker coming home to Torres. In for strike. Torres had a nice rope in the gap last time she came up. She's one of the many in the Oklahoma roster who is fighting for a starting spot. Trying to find something at second, but Coach Gasso talked about ultimately it comes down to the bats. Who Who's going to be effective? Yep. And so far, these past two games, Alina Torres has been so, so impressive. Two for two thus far on the season. Doubling an RBI. So watch that one in the dirt. Your second walk. Also, when I think of Torres from last season to this one, she seems slower in the box, not as rushed, not as panicked, a little bit more in control sure. of her body, of the decision making versus last year. It was rushed. It was not panicked, but trying to prove too much, trying to force too much. So it's good to see her a little bit more settled. Second A-B today for Cassie Pickering. Torres right now will get to settle back into the dugout as she is pinch run for. It'll be Avery Hodge. So Hodge, who started this game at second, will re-enter and conceivably finish at the Keystone as that race heats up right before our eyes here. Coach Gasso evaluating the options in real time. I 
nice pitch by Walker, getting that outside corner. Cassidy Pickery's proven both in the fall and the spring that she can she can hit both sides of the plate really well. So Walker's a great matchup for her because she's able to hit both sides and move the ball around. Pickering hit it well. Hodge to third. Sooners at the corners. Cassidy Pickering might be in the running for National Freshman of the Week right now. Simply locked in to begin her career. I was talking with Kat Alshima before the game, and she was calling Oklahoma's first game, and she said the two freshmen, they, they really play like veterans, and there's yeah. no – delay there's no panic they just seem very comfortable in the box they seem comfortable with who they are and their decision making and I love that from them and Patty Gasso talked about how the coaches they they don't have to do too much with the senior class but they have really stood back and watched the upperclassmen the senior class talk to the younger the younger girls and kind of guide them teach them grow them because they won't be here next year and that'll be the next generation of Oklahoma Sooners to take over. And I think yep. that's one thing that Oklahoma does so, so well. I think that contributes to their success year after year is they're able to share their knowledge and impart it and have people buy into that knowledge, buy into the program year after year because they're so open with it. So same deal. We have it second base. We also got in left. Hannah Kaur will re-enter the game and run for Pickering over at first. Riley Boone conceivably slated to hold down right field this year as opposed to left. She watches strike one. Hannah Kaur scooted over to second. She said, I'll take that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Chopped up, that's just off the glove of Walker. Baker able to save the day. Tapia finishes, and Duke keeps OU at three. And these two met up last year, it was four nothing. This one's shaping up to be just as good. Well, the obvious headline right now in this top 10 matchup is that Oklahoma and Duke do not need any time to get into midseason form from a defensive standpoint. Both making phenomenal plays all across the diamond, and we stay at 3 nothing. Kelly Maxwell will step aside here amidst a really good groove, but Patty Gasso's got a lot of options, and she turns to the super senior, Carly Keeney. Keeney here, she was a fantastic pitcher. She was in this tournament a year ago with Liberty and absolutely dominated. You could see her will to compete. I think that's the biggest thing about her that stands out to me. Grad transfers, gets to Oklahoma. Very first day of practice, coach said she broke her finger. So she's out all full long. And the biggest thing, again, Coach Gasso said, the finger, all that aside, she was the best teammate. She was invested in what they were doing, and she was ready to compete as soon as she was able. So I think as she comes out today, will we see her best of? I don't know. But will we see her compete? Definitely. Both of the pitchers now for Oklahoma were in this tournament last year with different teams, and both excelled. Okini's first game of the year with Liberty last year was against Oklahoma. 
She went seven innings of shutout softball against the number one team. Flames eventually lost in extras. Keeney's first pitch as a Sooner is a foul ball. And for Carly Keeney, her performances here in Puerto Vallarta do really call into stark contrast exactly what's possible here. Her first two appearances last year, she gave up one earned run and picked up an L in both. You don't have to worry about not getting run support when you pitch for the Oklahoma Sooners. Batting here is nine hole Zampa, but I mean, defensively had what was probably the best defensive play that I've seen all game. Full extension, parallel to the ground, along the foul line. Just amazing catch down the line. It was fantastic. I, I wish I could have gotten that on replay about 10 or 20 times because it was that good. Yeah. Looking here to maybe set the same kind of spark. And she will. She does just that. Kelsey Zampa has battled her way into this starting lineup for Duke. And she has no intention of leaving it now that she's here. A leadoff base runner for the Blue Devils. And that's exactly what they've been needing. We talked about they just need that one hit. They've been having hits, but none of them have fallen. This is the one. This is the one that got it going. This is the time for Duke to respond. Yana Jennings began this game with a single. There she looks for one of the bunt variety. Almost like clockwork, we've seen Duke, every time they get a runner on first, within the first one or two pitches, you see that sack bunt. They really want to get that runner in scoring position. This really is the battle of triumphant return from injury. Deanna Jennings broke her arm after getting hit by a pitch against Stanford in the postseason. You already mentioned Carly Keeney working on the broken finger. Gritty and determined, these two right now. And while I would never wish injury upon anybody, those who have gone through injury as a college yeah. athlete, there's so much that you learn when you're almost forced to be out of that playing. You're forced to be out of that perspective. And I think it makes you wiser to the game. It gives you a better understanding. So both of them, as they're coming into this year, there's a lot of knowledge that they're going to be carrying that they didn't have at the end of the season last year. And I think that's only going to help them thrive. It's only going to help them be a better teammate, but also make faster adjustments because they have that knowledge now. Great battle here at 0-2. A lot of foul balls. Mm -hmm. Jennings is just, she's stubborn in this box. She's not giving up. Coach Young calling her one of a kind. We caught up last night. That certainly applies to the sensational sophomore, Deanna Jennings. Right now, she is spoiling Keeney's debut. <laughs> I was just about to say, I am loving this at bat by Jennings. She is battling back and forth, back and forth. She's one of those slappers that she can just touch it if she doesn't want it. Just foul it off, foul it off. And as a pitcher, that's so frustrating. You just either want her to hit it or swing already. Not that time. That's a cool piece of work behind the plate, too. Kinsey Hansen knows right now for Duke, every base counts. Yep. Not trying to give them an extra one. 
2-2, Jennings goes to Jennings. That's where the out is. But what a great battle there from Jennings. Yes, yeah, she got um, that ball hit to Jennings, that shortstop. I kind of got tripped up because it's the same last name, but the battle to be able to foul off that many balls in a row, to stay in, to fight, to fight, to fight, and eventually get that ball in play. Deanna to Tiare for the fielder's choice. That's strike one. Giselle Tapia. Deanna staying put at first for now. She had 24 stolen base attempts in her freshman year, converted on 21 of them. But that said, we have already seen the pop time of Kinsey Hansen. There it is, and caught in the rundown. But she's able to get back. Fortunate that throw was in the dirt. Yeah, that looks like a hit and run gone wrong right there. That was a great job by Zampa being able to get back to the bag. You could see she was going. You heard the dugout yell runner going. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of runners. A little bit of wildlife. <laughs> a little bit of chatter. Everybody kind of loves the sun. See. Look at the speed, the acceleration. <laughs> Kind of impressed. Orange Keeney was just right standing now. there. <laughs> he, he wanted the softball. He was ready to get inside the circle <laughs> and start dealing. All the way down to the last third year. Base what was it? We saw a dog last year. It was a dog, right? Yeah. A giant lizard. I don't know. Oh, is that an iguana? I'm not very caught up on the lizard species there, but we're seeing all, <laughs> all the animal wildlife here. No doubt. Look more lizardy than iguana eat to me, though it is always tough to tell. <laughs> it looks big. The iguanas want the sun. It did look big. It did look big. Iguanas want the sun. Once it gets chilly, those iguanas will almost literally die. People see them fall out of trees, and then they wind up coming back to life when it gets warm. There's your Florida man fact of the day. As the reptilian has been corralled. Maybe I am half lizard. I kind of feel like I go <laughs> die oh, yeah. a little bit in the fall and come back to life in the spring. Yeah, no doubt. This time of year is definitely That's a breath impressive. of fresh air for all of us. Everyone's got a little reptile in them. That's for sure. <laughs> doesn't doesn't hurt that softball season starts back up as it's starting well, to get warm again. Well, that's certainly a big so. part of it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, following the running of the lizard. A one-two count to Giselle Tapia. <laughs> that one squirts away, and Tapia just swats <laughs> it away. All kinds of chaos happening here. Opening weekend will lead to things mysterious and weird. That one fouled straight back. Wouldn't be opening weekend without it. Talking about another battle here at the plate. Seen a lot of pitches, a brief intermission by a lizard running yeah. through the field, but to be able to have that break and then come back in immediately, lock back in, that's big. Woo! Speaking of being locked in, Oklahoma turns to Keeney Jennings. Sanders. Welcome to the Oklahoma Sooners, Carly Keeney.
as remarkable as the defense has been in this game, we haven't seen much in the way of double plays until now. Carly Keeney gets the hard hit ground ball up the middle, fields her position brilliantly, and turns a quick two for the Oklahoma Sooners. One, six, three, and now it will be a full pitching staff game for Duke as they turn to Jayla Wright, a 2-5-1 ERA a year ago, a record of 12 and four in her 133 and two thirds innings pitch. She struck out 127 while walking just 63. And I like that this staff has all been able to get in on this game, the experience, the confidence that they get after throwing to the number one team in the nation. You you don't get those opportunities very often. And so for them to be able to face these caliber hitters this early in the season only sets them up and prepares them for what's to come. We all know that ACC has been over the years an extremely competitive conference. I mean, you, you yeah. have some of the best programs in the country. Seems like out of nowhere, I mean, Duke, a fairly Correct. new program. Clemson, a fairly new program. Yep. Florida State has always been very, very solid. But yeah. you're starting to see the ACC become a lot more competitive and ranked really, really high. And I think having the ability to get these games in early only helps them later on this season. It really is a tremendous message to any school that does not have a softball program, especially in the Southeast. If you get the right pieces in place, and it's easier said than done, but what Duke and Clemson have done in such a short time is unbelievably impressive. And now, especially with the Pac-12 going the way of the Dodo in about a year, the opportunity to be the third best league in America is wide open, and the ACC is certainly poised to fill that gap. With these conference realignments, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of how will this play out? What will this look like? But I, I feel like ACC, they've been on the build. They've been on the build, so they're welcoming all this chaos because they're used to it almost. They're the Great one. Block there. Nobody will remain truly unaffected. But as we talk about what will be probably the big three leagues next year, the SEC is going to be completely different, particularly in the sport of softball as the Oklahoma Sooners and the Texas Longhorns join the SEC. That will unequivocally be the best league in our sport. The Big Ten will not be very far behind with the addition of three more schools, including the California football. That one came in and got Jada Coleman. Nothing is worse, and all the hitters out there know, nothing is worse than you taking the biggest hack and it going yeah. right off your bat into the ankle. Walk it off a little bit. Feel yeah. it out, shake it out. Had that stinger in on the hands right at the start of the game. <laughs> I know. She's all good. I'll tell you one thing. Wright's not afraid to go in no. to Jada Coleman right here. Wright was the first pitcher that Coach Young mentioned to us when we were talking about the pitching staff last night. Just the energy and intensity that Wright brings. Obviously, the numbers back it up as well, going over 130 innings last year, but she could be poised for even more now in her senior year. Maybe not in terms of innings. There's a good balance here, but in terms of efficiency. Absolutely. I mean, as a pitching coach, whenever you have – a pitcher on your staff who is just so efficient with her pitches and it might not be efficient in terms of ball strike but efficient of i want to throw the ball here i want to throw the ball there that is so so vital to mm -hmm. getting in and getting out really quickly i think of the first two pitches today jada coleman tied on the hands how the foul ball off the foot automatically goes farther away jada coleman fouls it off the ability to be efficient with her pitches.
Now is in the dirt. Got her swinging. Look at the movement from Jayla Wright. This one had Jada Coleman's ankles almost breaking on that pitch. Again, on that inside half, not afraid to go in on these lefties. I love that aggression. I love that confidence from her. That's a huge strikeout. Jada Coleman does not come up to bat and strike out very often. No. The freshman Parker goes after the bender. And she is just carrying that momentum right into this at bat. I love it. The dive, not quite enough this time. A professional at bat from Ella Parker. Finds that hole, sends it, looking for that down pitch. We talked about Oklahoma being able to not just hit the ball hard, but hit it hard enough that it gets past these defenders. That's five miles an hour slower, probably doesn't break through that infield. Here has been the biggest thorn in the side of the Blue Devils today. Tiara Jennings over the top there. That thing fell off the table out of the hand to right. <laughs> Her swing wasn't even close. That was a that was a dropping changeup. That was beautiful the way it just fell off that table. And the deception too. There's no slowdown in her body as she's coming at her. Mm -hmm. Flair to right, Tiara Jennings clinical. And the thorn lives to see another day. <laughs> yep. Six times on base on the first day of the season. I like the way Wright has been attacking these hitters but she's gonna need to sharpen up those corners just a little bit because with Kenzie Hansen and only one out, runners on first and second, that's a dangerous situation here for Duke. Oh, you fans will be thinking that Kinsey is due 0 for three in this game with three pop-ups. OU looking for some insurance here in bot six. Another pop, and that one just stays in the yard. Throw down. Absolute perfection from Torres. Pop awareness. The Blue Devils turn two. The magic number is three as we go to the seventh.
This is it now for the Duke Blue Devils. Now or never, they need three runs. Silver lining for the visitors on the scoreboard. They will have the heart of their order to bear. It's Gold, Davidson, and Vega scheduled to go against Carly Keeney for the first time. Just like that, you're wondering where'd the time go? How are we already yeah. in the top of the seventh? Sometimes as a Vallarta, team, whenever we... you're playing and you're in it, it it's yeah. hard because the games get away from you a little bit. But yep. I think for Duke, they're a team, you can't cut them out until the last out is there. And three runs, I mean, that's not a huge lead for Oklahoma. That's very, no. very doable for Duke. Couple swings, couple hard hits. So the ability to stay locked in this last inning, get these runs across, the time the time is now. Yep. Here in PV, we call it the Kelly Maxwell effect. She went 12 up, 12 down. That shortens the time of the game considerably. We have seen it here. Right now, it's her team in line for the win as Keeney looks to close the door. Last year between these two, it was a really similar game, 4 nothing. It was kind of a scrappy game. Boone was the only returning RBI from that matchup for Oklahoma. It was an error play that eventually led to the run score. That was the fourth and final. But, I mean, I think, again, at the end of the day, the ability to be in this game, compete, hold each other, battle back and forth. Because, yes, Kelly Maxwell was so, so efficient. But I, I got to give props to Walker. She came in and she shut Oklahoma down. Yep. And that that's what you want to see. We were talking about pitching staffs. That's what you want to see from your pitching staff is you bring somebody in for relief, they've got it. Yep. It's funny, as the word of the day remains synergy, you certainly have it with your former coach because she said the exact same thing. You know, th this is baseball now. You've got starters, middle relievers, and closers, especially at this level, and these two teams, the level of pitching depth that they have. You're going to see that little increase in specialization, especially come postseason play. Chops it up. Brito on the backhand across the diamond. Brito made that one look easy. That's a hard play. A short hopper to the backhand. She's able to stay down. I think that's one of her, her biggest strengths over there at third is the ability to take funky hops and be able to stay behind it, not trying to rush the throw too often. That hot corner has been scorching in this one. And Brito's been up to every single task put in front of her. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carly Keeney off that injury. Has faced the minimum in her own right. Thanks to the double play that she started. Four up, four down. Good pitch there. Davidson, she's had a couple of hits herself that have been hard, but just gone nowhere. I think one of them was out in that left center area. That was a hard, hard hit. So for her, it's just trying to stay in that same zone, trying to lock in. Davidson has had a ton of momentum coming out of the fall. He's using it right now. Great discipline there from Davidson.
Five pitch walk. First one that Keeney's issued. It'll be up to the preseason All-American, Amina Vega. Big hack. Vega drops it into the grass. The Blue Devils are not done yet. The tying run in Kelly Torres comes to the plate. And that's all it is. It's passing the bat right there. I love to see it. And those were hits that weren't necessarily dropping earlier on in the game. Yep. That's a great point. Duke felt due. They've gotten it right now. That will come in and plunk Torres. Wow, what a turn. Just like that, Duke is back in it, and that's what we were talking about at the beginning of this inning. Duke is not a team that gives up and goes down without a fight. Yes, that pitch hitter, but there were two other runners on base already, so the pressure now is on Keeney, is on Oklahoma. Base is loaded, one out. That's what you love to see from Duke. Frankie On the flip side, if you're Oklahoma, mm -hmm. if you're Oklahoma, you've got a handmade double play somewhere written with your name on it. Force at any base. Freelick watches strike one. She doubled her games started year over year in the 2023 campaign. Now one of the unquestioned leaders, very quickly down 0-2 to Carly Keeney. She's coming at her after that last at bat to Torres. Keeney's not messing around, and that's where you see that competition. High and tight. That is a great protection swing. In this moment here with bases loaded, the most important thing, stay within yourself. Don't be trying to be the hero and get a huge hit. Just feel your swing, be who you are. Lift it up and, and reel out of that play. zone in a little bit. Yep. Seen free leg swing at two. Teeny. First one, almost, almost at her helmet. Fouled that yeah. one off. The next one, a little bit higher. Would love to see her take a deep breath here. All the pitches, the balls being exchanged. Take a deep breath, reset. She's battling here with O2. I love that fight from her, but just zone down just a tad. Yeah, right now, if you're Keeney, there is no reason to put one in the strike zone. Let's see if you can get that swing and a miss. Freelick shortens up. Keeney comes home. Appeal down. Did not go. And there's that discipline right there. You love to see that. That one's good. Keeney's first OU strikeout comes in the seventh with the bases loaded. Carly Keeney is clutch. Try saying that five times fast, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure this isn't the last time we will be saying it. That was a battle, that was a fight, but for her to come in and be calm, cool, collected, this is gonna be, I'm calling it now, a big arm for Oklahoma. No question about that. What a job. Coach Rocha, Coach Gasso did in the transfer portal in the circle. That catches the zone. The 
Feeney not even at 100% just yet. But working her way back from that finger injury. But right now, she'll have the chance to slam the door regardless. It'll only get better as the season goes on. She's now one strike away. And what a moment for her to be the one in the circle right now after having to sit out all fall long and to be able to be in this position to get this last strike, to get this last out, to get the first win for Oklahoma. Huge, huge moment for her. One of the bigger games the Sooners will have all year. And it comes in just their second. Duke has acquitted themselves more than well. They're not interested in that right now. They want to tie this game up behind Jada Baker. Chopped up. Jennings has it, makes the flip, and Carly Keeney and the Sooners hold on in the seventh inning. Oklahoma has won 55 straight games and will finish day one in Puerto Vallarta, two and O, oh, picking up a top 10 win against a really good Duke team. Nicole, that game was everything we could have hoped for and more. And what turned out to be by a pretty narrow margin, the Sooners survive and keep the win streak alive. Live to fight another day. This was a top 10 matchup for sure. Oklahoma wins three to nothing, but it was a battle. I think you called it right. It might be the year of the pitchers. We saw a lot of the staff from both sides. Thank you. 